So we're going to get warm enough first, we're going to do a quick warm up, which is going to be about 30 seconds ish. Um, and that's just going to get us nice and warm so that when we start the core, we are warm and we've gone through the different muscle groups and the different joints. So nice and easy, 30 seconds to start off with. Yeah, first two exercises are going to be normal than we are. And we're going to work the right side and the left side. So we're going to do a lunge, we're going to lunge back once and then quick lunges, quick steps. So all that is, is a good lunge, engage your core, your toe, touch his heel and back. 30 seconds, hands, bring them up nice and high, touch the heel, snap it back. So it's nice, keep that on changes, so it runs forward, touches the heel and takes it back. So you're constantly engaging your core, you're squeezing your core, you're getting that stretch on your back hip as you go through, and then we'll come back up. We never come all the way high, so you always just touch the heel, back. That's it. Next time, we're going to change, we're going to go to the opposite side. So if you are to the right, go to the left. Five, four, three, two, one. All the rest, and then change the back, take it back, touch, and the back. Keep the core, the core nice and engaged. We always take the chest up nice and high. Every exercise we do, we always take the opportunity to squeeze the core. We squeeze the core to work it. If we relax, we drop the hips. You're not going to work the core as effective. Last five seconds or so. Next exercise we're going to do is 30, 15 slow jacks, double jacks, 15, a lot quicker to get warmed up. 3, 2, 1, slow. Hands coming up, shoulder height, snap them back. 15 seconds, and then we pick up speed. We're really going to go quick. We get them in and out as quick as we can. Three, two, one, fifteen. Come in quick, zoom to your toe punch, get them out wide. So this will get us warmed up. Not a bit slow, but we want to get muscles. This is about one and a half quicker. Next one we're going to do is four push ups, four swap thrusts. Three, two, one. Standard push up. Four, as soon as you hit your fourth, knees come in on the squat thrust. Squat thrust when you hit here, so we'll slow it down. I'm going to explain how the squat thrust works, what muscle group you're working, and how you get the best out of it. Keep going, four, four. So we're going to do a 30 second knees, so we finish four, four. Go back to four push ups, and then back to four squat thrusts. 30 seconds work. Next exercise we're going to do is a burpee, for the four seconds push down. That's a push up, take it down, one and four, three four, you go five. Three, two, and one. You slowly bring it up, so it's a curvy, take it down, back, push down, one, two, three, four, push up, and back down, keep it big. So the last one to go down, I'll count to four seconds. Ready? Three, two, one, and we're on. Four, three, Two, one, knees forward, come back, perfect. Spring your toes back, last one down, four, three, two, one, bring it forward, jump high, two done. Four, three, two, and one, bring it forward, jump high, get one more reach, take it down, last one down, four, three, two, one, knees forward, jump high, we're going to go wide. Very quick, quick touches on the toes, nice flex on the knees, keep the chest up, look straight ahead, quick toes, try to tap the floor, squeeze your back. Two more exercises and then all the more. I'll just bring it up as you go along, so you don't want to sleep in and hit the floor. Next one we're going to do is switch squat kicks. That's the squat down, knee up, kick it out. Last three seconds of knees, three, two, one. Spread in the squat, knee up, kick out. Again, keep the core engaged, nice and tight. Go up with the hip, the hip that raises it up, then it kicks out. The longer you're on one leg, the more you're going to test your core. Got one final exercise to finish us off. We're going to do four switch kicks. 
Get the butts of the arms in the core. Keep everything nice and tight on the legs. Last five seconds, deep squat, knee, kick out. We're going to change into floor switch kicks, fingertips back, belly button nice and high, right kick, left. Slow it down, I'm not trying to go quick, I'm missing it out. Slow control. Three, two, and one. Belly button up. Raise your belly button as high as you can. Hip, start it off, finger the hip coming up, knee, kick. Tip one after the other. If that one comes down, lands on the other side, the other one takes over. Final ten. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good stuff. Please wait a second, three. That's just warm. Alternate each side. Always keep the leg nice and straight. 
and show the place to be off the floor. So take the bandage, this is your rest, off we go. So back to the bank, knee in, knee out. We should all be slow and control. If this goes on, as you start to work with four more, you'll realize how more effective it is by doing slow control movements. If you go fast, it gives you a little bit of a rest, and it loses the heat. Just be slow, be control, stop if you need to. See what? what's going on? The next one, alternative things. See hold position, make sure you're right, you get your core, one after the other. Hands again, flat on the floor, up to chest, up to temple, slow control. When we start doing this, it's tempting to go quick because it starts to hurt, slow down so you can fail. Always try to fail. That's it. Legs extend out as far as you can. 30 seconds rest. So at the end of that, you should just go as if you wanted to drop. Next one we're going to do, we do this over and over again so we know but for other people, squat thrusts. So we start in a high push up position, try to get the toes as far as the back, knees come through the arm and back, keep the hips up high. And then we go and we'll switch it across and we'll see the wall. That's it. So we start, we're going to bring it in and out. I'll demonstrate this one again. So concentrate on the squat thrust. The same hold that comes next. It's the same hold, knees in the chest. So there's a little bit. Knees come in, feet to the chest and back. So this is the reverse of that movement. And you'll find that this gets stronger because of the next movement. Slow down, a little bit different from outside. Not too steady, turn around. Start with the same hold. So we come up, squeeze up, in, in, out, in, out. This is tough for 30 seconds. This is the first one that should stop yet. Keep it warm, knees in, straight, knees in, straight. Almost there, they're done. So we'll take advantage of that rest, it's going to get harder and harder as it moves on. As I say, we are going to split it up. Next one we're going to do is pump. Thumbs must touch, that's only different. The knees come wide. Heels go down, and the chest comes up slightly. Then we're going to do the same wood, exactly the same, but wide legs. So squeeze round, we're going to get here and here. The post of that one, we'll switch it to four. So 30 seconds, 30 seconds comes. My favourite movement, because it does what the squat thrust does. The ball is going to hit your this. The heart is inside the legs, outside the legs, and it hits your backside and your hamstrings more than a squat thrust. So you could argue why do a squat thrust when you can do a cock, because it hits more muscles. Work for the 30 seconds. Then we're going to switch it around, stay warm, legs nice and wide. Keep your rhythm. Try to keep it nice and warm. Well done. Switch it around. This is hard work straight into this. Take it up. Take it wide, bring the chest up and wall. Keep it out wide and squeeze it. Got all the bags of money to hold. Well done, so you needed that one. That's the way it should be, like the big sense of relief. When we finish. Next one's a tough one which we're going to start hitting the blitz. So we're going to do um, cross climbers. So from this position, slow and control, bring it across. Keep the toes up, knee fires across to opposite far arm. Then we're going to switch it round. Same position, touch heel, touch heel, in and out. Really hitting, separately for and the blitz. So take our body to a bit of recovery on the climbers. This one, we've got the option of dropping down into a plank, like we did in the first climbers. All that's going to do is create a little bit more of a hit on the upper core. This allows you to clear the knees and the hips and really fire through a big side. 
So the next one, as we go into it, coming close, we're going to bring the knees up, and we're reaching across. Think about the heels coming in more than your body coming up. Up, squeeze in, squeeze. It's almost a hold as your fingertips touch the heel. Two exercises left, and that's it. We've gone through the first slot. We're not going to hit every exercise, but some of the exercises that we're going to hit But every exercise in the workout, we'll make sure we hit it at the end. So 30 seconds, your final 30 seconds. Time two, what we're going to do is plank the bleaks, and then see kayaks. So that's all the way down, high or low, your choice. Bring the hip up. Then we're going to turn around. Fly back. You find the cross spot. Drop the heels down if you need to. Bring it up. Cross. Again, I think you're right when we start this. Everybody's got a different resistance on your, on your core. Everybody has hit a different spot. You'll feel your core engaging. This one's working your hips. Trying to squeeze it in. Keep it going. something that I'm calling fat sets and the same. Is this because it's aimed at fat people? So it's actually fatigue sets. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the end of the day, if you're going to exercise that, that attacks fat, then why not call it fat rather than disguise it as something else? It is a, a fat set. This one works a little bit different because we're all different. I hate working in time, so that's 30-30. I prefer to have a number of exercises. Do 12 reps and I can keep myself focused, so mentally I'm, I'm attacking 12 and I'm trying to get to 12. If I get to 11, I think next time 12. Second, you don't know where you're at, you don't know how many reps you've done. So this works better for me. You're going to do 20 reps, you might not get to 20. All I see is, because it's called fatigue, see if it's squat thrust and you've got the 19, you know you couldn't bring that one in. Rest, just accept that you've done the 20. All you're going to do is get 10 seconds rest and then you go into the second exercise. So, um, sorry, the first exercise, but we'll repeat it. So we'll start it off nice and easy, so you know what it is. We're going to do mountain climbers in a, in a T position or a high push-up position. And all you're going to do is count this twice. So some of them it gets hard when you see it. Two leg movements is one. Others, when you just stop there, the unilateral movement, it's a lot easier. So a mountain climber, slow controlled one. One, two, two, three, three. When you rest, because everybody's going to be at different stages, I'm going to just keep up and count 10 in your head. So do the old one, two, three, four, five. If you only get your 18, still start, if somebody else might be working towards 20, but you're at a different uh, point. So you do your 18, count to 10, and then try 20 again. 
So what you're trying to achieve is two lots of 20. You might end up with an 18 and a 15, but six weeks time, you can do 20 and 20 in the process. So amount of climbs to keep us off, slow control. In build camp, you see a lot of this. So that's good in build camp because you get a good um, cardio workout to work in your heart. This is about core. So all you do is slow it down and squeeze the hip as you come through. One, you, one. So one, one, two. So two movements on this one. I'll tell you if there's any change, you don't get this two leg movement left and right after each time one. So mountain climbers, three, two, one, and we're off. So your left, then your right, climb one. Everybody's got a nice tempo, everybody's in a good position. Backside should be slightly high. That's going to keep the hips up, it's going to allow you to play when you come in with your knee. As you're coming in, squeeze all the way to the side of your core. So this works the centre of your core. When your knee comes up, it's going to hit through your hip flexor. That's what attaches from your leg, high leg, into your obliques. So slow control. It's going to feel like it's going to go on a long time. So trust yourself for 10 seconds. And this half hour I'm doing at this one, 10 seconds is turned into 15. And uh, you'll admit that. 10 seconds is quite hard to go again. So don't worry if you take 15 or 20 seconds. Coming back to it and starting again. Well done, Catherine. Everybody else joining in, knees in nice and high. Backside always remains up. And you can see now, because we've slowed it down, everybody's got perfect technique. There's nothing loose. The knees are coming in, coming direct to the elbow. We're squeezing from the hip, your shoulder blades are nice and strong and high, you can see your shoulders and your arms working. Once you're done, we'll find as we go along. You'll know which ones you don't get the 20, and just remember it for the next one. So when you go and you do this at home, tell yourself a little target that you're going to do 20. So, next one. In this one, when you have a look at it, you've got two groups. You've got one to six, and one to six, two groups. And all I say is that you take one exercise from the first group, and then the second one should be from the second group. Third one should be from the top group. And what I say if you're doing it at home, pick three exercises from group A and three exercises from group B. So it means you've got six exercises in total where we're going to do this 2020. The next one I've chose is uh, feet in, and we're going to do an oblique reach. So it's not as easy as it looks. So nice and straight, bring the knees in, shoulder blades come up, and I'm going to try fingertips and touch my left heel. Don't worry if you don't get there. Attempt to come across, touch. That's one, two, three. You'll find you've got different ranges. I can get a nice reach out and touch my left, but I can't quite touch on my right. And that's purely just because of movement and flexibility. Yeah. So left, one touch, right, that's one rep. Touch left, touch right, and two right. So we're going to do 20, 10 seconds rest, 20 again. So you can see some people's off, some people naturally get into it, other people look a little bit more jerky. You can see all you're doing is that from that position, flexion on the hip, you bring it in, touch, cross the other side. And you're just moving from side to side, it's just that lateral movement. Shouldn't be jerky, you shouldn't be rounding your core. Some people come up. Keep it all in the same position, shoulder blades slightly off the floor. Again, you're all going to count your recovery. So once you rest, take advantage. I'm going to come back after 10, 10 seconds, and then give it another go. So we're still doing forms of supersets. This time it's the same exercise. And you'll find when you do this at home, you'll know which ones are the easier, and you'll mix them up. Because sometimes you're doing it that great. When you try to do it, Picking the difficult exercises more third force, you're not going to hit the 20s. So sometimes it's good to put a little 20 in. This one is a strange feeling because we're hitting muscles that we don't normally use. See it, reach it out. Doesn't matter if you don't touch your heel, we're all getting good at them. Some's touching, some find that they come in and touch your calf. As long as you get that seal motion from left to right. When you get, this is here, we call that a little breather, so you try to get 10 seconds. Now I'm going to go and get the next exercise, explain the next exercise and straight in. So this one, again, is easy if you go fast and you don't feel your core. Mountain jacks, everybody does mountain jacks. 20 and you're done. So this, if 
try to bring your shoulder blades a little bit higher so you're looking over your fingertips. Squeeze your hips up, engage your core. Out, in, one. It should be that slow. You should be on your toes and try to push your heels high. Feel the distance for 20 and then try at home. Try doing 20 fast. It's unreal the difference. Slightly more of a breath if you go fast. You'll find that this catches up. 20, 10 seconds rest, and then 20. So it doesn't change. This is exercise number three. After this, we've got another three to go through. So we'll hit six exercises in here. Here's perfect position. Backside and rise up a little bit higher in this one. That's going to make sure your hips stay up and you engage your core. And throughout this, you'll feel different changes in your core. So we're going to hit the top line of your core. I'll tell you as we go along. So you'll hit the you'll hit exercises where you purposely try and go back. Top line, centre of your core, lower core, which is really good for women, effective for women. They always struggle to get to the lower core where men it comes a little bit easier. So you maybe emphasize that a little bit more. In hips. Hips again for women. Always want to make sure that we work the hips. Above the hips we just place that core, the rotation of the movement, the rotation across the body. 2020, everybody seems as if they're managing the 20. Next one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So I'm going to give you a little bit more of a rest. In this one, we're going to count one movement rather than counting going to the left and going to the right. We're going to count to the left is one, back to the center, back to the right is two. So we'll count them out. So we're going to do a ski arts, same strong position. Hips come up nice and high, and now I'm trying to get my knees coming across. We're both going to come together, touch across, that's one, two, and back. So you can see, I'm turning my hips down, I'm in that strong position where I'm feeling my core and my obliques, and then I snap them back and I rotate the upper back round to there. So it's a nice twist, gives you a nice flexion all the way through, increases the motion in your back. Off we go. So come out and as forward as far as you can. So you want to just take the knees directly across, turn the hips down. When your left hip comes through, feel the stretch all the way across your, your, your legs. It goes all the way through the legs, all the way the hips. And you can see, as you get 12, 13, people speed up. And that's because you start to feel it, your shoulders start to hurt, your arms start to hurt, you want to rest. So you speed up. So try to keep the same pace. We get the 12, then we're happy. Do you have a 12, buddy? Do I keep saying 12? Yeah. 12, pretty much way. So that's it, so that's exercise number three. This next one goes on quite a bit, but. So once you've done it once, you feel that squeeze, get your 10 seconds rest, and then we're going to go again. The next exercise that we're going to do gives you a little bit of a break, but there's a key element of it where you're really catching your core. That's why it's looking for you. Feet all the way back to the centre, knees coming across, so just think about knees coming up and out, and then think your second thought is your hips rotating in and dropping down. Just try to keep a nice rhythm. When it starts to hurt, you go fast. So slow it down. Everybody always struggles when they do this to understand why you sweat and why you're so warm. And we're not moving fast, we're not doing burpees with you know eccentric dynamic jump moves. We will find you sweat just as much. I think get a drink. Um, you sweat just as much. If you do it indoors, you're obviously up against the heat. This is always a cool place, but still feels quite warm when you get a few feet on the start to move around and start to do it. So at home, turn the centre of the heat off, get the windows open, because you're obviously going to be up against it when we start doing this at home, we're not going to see it through. It's amazing how this ex these exercises change. Slow, controlled, 
you saw the recruit more muscle fibers and do an explosive moves. And the more muscle fibers you recruit, the more you're going to feel that intensity in the heat. You've got heat in your body, you take your body temperature up, you're going to sweat. It's simple as like that. It's not always about putting a bit of spring to get there and make a body sweat or running 10 miles to sweat. You can sweat a hell of a lot more doing this. So this one is going to allow you to get a little bit of recovery. If you do a good technique, it's going to hit across your T section, which is your arms and your shoulders and your chest. And when you go out, you can really feel your core. You can take this another stage and make it more intensive by putting a push up in, but for this, all we're going to do is walk it out and we'll push up and then walk it back. So it's a squat, a squat down, fingertips touch, you walk out, push up position, just make sure, you can see there I've come off my toes and I'm getting that stretch out, walk it back and return up, one, down, push up, walk it back. When you go forward and you get in that position, toes coming forward and squeeze your core. So you'll fit on your top line of your core, squeeze it and then ease off as you go back. 20. <laughs> so 20 reps, 10 seconds rest, and then 20 again. This goes on, it's a bit monotonous, off we go. This time it gives you a break from constantly hitting that C section where I'm constantly hitting the core. This gives you a little bit of break. Bring your legs in, your legs are going to help you out. You're going to fire up on the front of your legs. Your quadriceps are on a couple of your front of your legs and your hamstrings kicking when you go back. Once we get through these, we're going to do a little bit of a mix up just so we take it off the core. We're going to work your legs with some little 10 rep challenges. And then we'll come back to the final one, which is a really intense finish. And a one that you might do at home if you want that little bit extra challenge. So 20, 10 seconds rest, and then go again. As I see a time taken, so this can build up all these exercises at home when you put the 30-30s in. It's guaranteed that you're going to hit 10 minutes, 2 minutes rest. This might take a little bit longer. Because you're doing 20 reps, you don't know what the time is. This can take 15 minutes or so. That's it. All the way out, going to a push-up position. Feel as if you're ready, feel as if you're strong enough to do a push-up. But resist the urge, walk the hands back. Come back from a squat position. A lot of people come up and round over the back. So you bring your hands onto your back and come up. So you're doing a reverse squat. And one more exercise in the 2020. Then we'll have a little break, then we'll have a drink, legs, and then we'll finish off with the final one. Uh, time, time check. When you put it in, this is one that you might miss out. If you do it this way at night, when you get that eight bed done, 10 minutes, this one might be one that you might not put in. If you've got a little bit more time and you want to turn it into a 15 minute workout, you might put it in. Like you see, you do 20, you think, bam, that's enough. Or you could do this and do 10. Do 10 reps, and do this, and you see, I'm not just doing one of it, and then I'm guessing the rest do 10. That's it, walk the hands out. Good squat, deep squat, walk the hands out, take them back, and then return. Next one's back to snappy. The next exercise that we choose, it's going to hit the obliques again. It's going to really fire up your hips. So we'll get a nice room on your hips. So we'll work all the way around, set up your core, your lower back. And we're going to go in a little bit quicker. This is time taking. Slow, control, in, out, in, out. The next one, we'll speed it up a little bit and we'll get through it. Technique throughout, keep it nice and the same, nice tempo, nice up rhythm. As we go down, we're not trying to rush it. You find that you get a 12, you think, I want this to come to an end, so again, you speed it up. You keep it to speed, consistent, slow it down. As we go down, you're going to feel the legs working, feel the backside is open. Hands go down, then you're going to change from the leg work to upper body. Load up your legs. Slowly out, really strong on your arms and shoulders. Just proving that when we work core, it's not all about core, we use other assistant muscles as well. They're key and they're going to help you keep strong. Everybody wonders why they've got a weak core and it's something that we don't use day to day. It's not functional to use it. 
find that we're legs, we go up steps, we go up to walk uphill, we're constantly on the move, we've got naturally as, as, as individuals, we've got strong legs, that comes naturally. But the body's a little bit different, unless you've got a job where you work on the building site, the neighbor and you're carrying things, it's very rare most of us stay here and lift anything heavy. Likewise, it's very rare that we're doing that flexion of your hips, Get up, down, turn left, turn right. Why would you do that in a particular gear? Depending on what type of job you've got. So a nice breather, we're done. So this will snap through a little bit quicker. 20, 10 seconds, and then 20. So all we're going to do is lateral hops. And this, to fire through it, at home you've got the choice. You can either count it left to right is one, or go left and right is two. So you've got the choice, depending on time. So the idea is you go across, and then back. So that will count that as one, back to the centre, left, right and back, left, right and back. So you always go from left to right and come back to the centre. So a wheel count, left is one, across is two, back to the centre. So it will look like this. From there, hips forward, we're going to bring it across. Take the cross, one, across, two, across and three. So you can mix it up. One day when you do it, you might concentrate on the big movement to your right, the next day you might do it, the big movement to your left. It's up to you. Ready? Three, two, and one. All the way across. So your hips is definitely working. The other one that's going to squeeze in, reduce the angle on your hips. Bring the knees in. And grab that position. Keep that flexion on the knees. And just work your toes. Toes go left to right. You'll find it's a different workout if you keep your legs straight. Have a little bit of flexion at your knees, it's going to totally change the feel. 10 seconds rest. Remember you count out and go back again. We're good in position, use it up. You can do big movements or you can bring it in the middle. Once you've finished, get a nice drink. So that's what's getting through. I'll give six exercises that size again for four of the top sets. So again, different movements. If you come across it on the worksheet, you know what they are. These is lateral hops. So you know what to expect. All the way across your left, all the way across your right. If you need that break, put it in the middle, then go left and right. So it's your choice. As soon as you finish this 20, 10 seconds rest of 20, get yourself a drink. We're going to go straight into the next one, which is the most intensive. We're going to do a little leg workout. We're just going to do a quick 10 reps of squat variations. And then we're going to hit the final workout, which is the most intensive because it's going to do. And that's our core hit. So get a drink, take a back to it, take the rest. So we should be at the point where we're feeling a little bit tired in the legs. The legs are working quite a lot throughout the core. And you should be constantly hitting that squeeze on your core. And the good thing about the core is you work hard every year. There's not many muscle groups. If you work your legs, you should really get a good three, four days rest before you do legs again. That's the idea. With core, you can work your abdominals, your obliques, your lower back. You can hear a really hard one here and the rest is not going to be able to work the legs here. Here, like really too warm or too. So, all we're going to do is just snap the release just to keep the legs in. Just very quickly, 10 reps. We're going to take variations of squats just because when you're doing core, you tend to get a little bit lazy with your legs. They'll get heavy. So, we're going to fire them up and then go into the last workout, which is going to be a mix of quite intensive moves. So, pretty straightforward squats, 10. It's nice and controlled. Are you ready? Off we go. 10 squats. A little variation, so we're going to pick it up a little bit. Then we're going to do 10 sumo squats. A sumo squat is a knee raise, one side, other side for two. So we'll squat down. One, two, three, four. Straight into it, we're trying not to have any rest, so we're totally feeling these legs. 
Squat, left knee, squat, right knee. Third one is an exercise we did in the warm up. Switch kicks. So we'll kick the chest back, squat, knee, kick. One, two, three. Just giving you time, even though we're still working in the squat, giving you core that little bit of a rest. Next 10 reps, squat jumps. Load it down, jump high. Little bit of a challenge when you do these, something else that you can add in at home. If you're thinking, oh, I've got a spare. Sort of five, six minutes, work your legs. Snap through them, 10, 12 reps. Without rest, you're gonna feel it at the end. 12 quick squat pulses, and that's just quick down. Take it down, don't go too high. Take it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. As soon as you're finished, still work the legs. People don't realize how much it works the legs. A burpee, slow, control, and up. Ten burpee. Just so anybody watching this, it's always amazing to me that people don't know what a burpee is. You guys know too well what a burpee is, but people still send me questions asking what the hell a burpee is. <laughs> and my favourite leg exercise of all, of all times, the number one exercise to get you out of breath and hit your legs. Squat, tuck, high as you can, keep it down low and bring your knees up from here. Jump, and up, ten and you're done. And it's back into this tough little core hit to finish us off. So another drink, once you're finished and you pick your 10, get a breather, that's took your heart rate up, I guarantee. Everybody's going to get 90% of their heart rate. So if you ever wondering where you need to be to get 90%, that's the feeling. Do 10 sweat cuts, and instantly your heart rate gets to about 90%. So 90% is going to burn a hell of a lot more fat than 50%. So the more we're in the 90% zone, the more fat we're going to burn. So the last one we're going to do is core hit. Back to exercise A and B. Two exercises. A is going to change, but B is going to be the same for the first two. So exercise A on the first one is a plank hold. On the second one it's a C hold. B is always going to be wide tuck jumps. And you can play around with this. There's three tough movements. There's B, what you can mix up and put it however you like so you can play around with it. So we're going to do exercise A for 30 which is a plank. Once we've hit 30, you're gonna hear the beeps again. You're gonna bring it up, go wide, and tuck jumps. It's not a squat tuck jump, it's tuck jumps. We're trying to go as quick as we can, keep your core engaged. Then we're gonna go have 30 seconds rest, and then we're gonna do the second exercise, which I mentioned, which was the C hold. So around the plank, you're gonna hold the C, and then come up and do those again. So. 30 seconds, listen for the beep, plant, we're going to come up, we're going to do those wide, really wide feet, tuck jumps, three, two, one, back to the plank, so we did the plank at the start, and it's always good to put plank hold in a seat hold in, exercises where we're not moving, and you think you're not moving, it's going to be easier than moving, but we find out that squeeze in that hole that we, that we hold, you know you're going to have a tough workout. So squeeze it, you count in the seconds now, it's coming close. Get ready, get away from the mats. Go wide, snap them in as quick as you can. So we're just going to do the beat, not dead, do the beat. This is hard to put up, we're going to get all in. When your feet come in, go wide. Challenge yourself. How many can you get before the big? Five on the ten. Count them down. Thirty seconds rest. So you can get the rest. Don't go and swim in the next exercise. Get a few more in. Keep going. Keep going. Now rest. Thirty. So thirty seconds rest. Smell up again. Yeah.
<laughs> oh, that one after. So a seahorse coming next, and then the white jumps again. Try to keep them white, it really hits inside and out. So a lot more challenging on this 30. As soon as you hear that beat, we're up. We're going to hold it. The next beat that we've got, we're up. So this is a great example of mixing up the intensity. You can't get any more different from what we're doing now to the second exercise here. It's a nice control, nice left move, you're not moving, you're not moving, getting in the same position, shoulder blades up, legs as straight as we can. As soon as you hear that beat, bang, we're off again. Squeeze it, it's coming. And this is what you'll do at home. You'll really progress through. Get them wide, get them on. Travel yourself, have a good do the first time. Then you get the second time. Get the legs off, knees off. Get them going off hard. Use your hands as targets. Keep on your toes, don't let your heels come down. That's it, springs, keep going. That thing is going to be coming. Three, two, and one. Oh, Let's go. <laughs> so, can I rest? The second part is intensive. As will the next one. So, the next two exercises squat thrusts and palms. So, there's the movements from the team position. So, a squat thrust for 30. Slow control. Don't go fast. And then we're going to do high climbers. High climbers, we're starting one. We're going to reach up, pull it down and change. <coughs> Go as hard as you can. So this is a one. We'll play it round. Squat thrust to start off with. Slow control every time. When we hit the high climbers, I'm going to show you the difference in feel from speed and tempo. When we do high climbers again, boot camp, you always go fast. You're always trying to change in the knees as quick as you can. Final few seconds, we're going to come up straight in with it. Start your normal pace like you would do these. Hard as you can. We're going to hit 15, I'm going to get everybody to slow. Feel the change when we're slowed down. 10 seconds gone. Final three, two, one. Now slow down. So we try to keep the knee up as long as you can. You watch how it changes. Backside hurts a lot more, hamstrings hurt more, and your core hurts more. That's it, Kongs. Next time, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, Kongs. 30 seconds, back to those. Start on your feet, <coughs> and slow down for your final 15. Final 15. So take advantage of the rest. Once we've had the rest, we're going into Kongs. Thumbs touching. The phone go as slow as you possibly can. Knees change. And both hands can't tell you when you're doing this. If you've got Rome or Craig, definitely edge. They'll tell you to never go faster. They'll tell you to move quicker. That's on your face. Don't get confused. If you work your core, you go slower. People who know me doing cones, know they always get the heels down and the chest up. That's a good thing, Kong and squat thrusts can be used for two, three, and three minutes. So one more time. So we're going to start off, that's it, straight in. It's only you, Louise. So we're going to start off by tight knees. And then we're going to three, two, one, just slow down. Flying through these. <laughs> That's it, have a break. So we're going to finish the last one off just because we're running out of time. You do a left side plank for 30, then you're going to do a white swing for 30, then right side. All we're going to do to finish it off, it's a little bit more of a challenge, you're going to go left side, right side, and then 30 seconds of wide sprints. Ignore the beeps, I'll start it again. So we're going to do 30 seconds, elbow under the shoulder, hips up, hold for 30. Hear the beat, switch it up, squeeze 30, in your final 30, hard as you can. So we've got 90 seconds in total, 
Breathe it in. We're just going to go to the top, 30 seconds. As soon as you hear the beat, you know the beat first time. I'm going to tell you when you're coming down, tip top down, go to the other side. So switch it around. Opposite elbow, 30 seconds, and wide sprints, and we're all done. So you can see, perfect. Just going to pull slightly. So you want to feel as if the elbow is back to the under. So your shoulder always sits above your elbow. Last 30 seconds, we're getting through every exercise. Bring it up, final time. Before you swing, squeeze your core and back as hard as you can. 30 seconds to the beep, nearly done. Final time, last 15. Pick up your speed for your final 15. This is all we've got left. Work your arms, feel your obliques working. Tilt from your hips, here we go. Three, two, and one. Excellent, well done everybody. Massive effort, every exercise has been hit. So you can come back and have a look at this, it's on video. You can come back and if you're wondering what the exercises were, get yourself through and see what they are. Thanks very much for the day, thanks for coming along. Well done everybody. Tell us how you feel tomorrow, will you call?